Okay, what you see in the vise is uh, often referred to as a uh, two-tone larva. Uh, it's just a basic body color with a second color to it. Uh, you can make these in different colors. Um, they're actually real simple to make. Uh, you only actually have to have two materials to make this fly. Thread and uh, stretchy tube. Uh, Wopsy makes some. You can get larva lace. I think larva lace, they call it midge tubing. Uh, Wopsy calls it micro, I believe. But it just it's just stretchy. It's really super thin, super small. It's about the diameter of the hook shank. Uh, real easy to do. I'm going to tie this on an 18. You can go up to a, uh, you know, you can go up to a 14, I guess, uh, and it probably fish all right, in the, and do all right in some waters. Uh, typically, these are tied between 18 and 24. So if you're, if you've never tied a midge, this is actually a really friendly midge pattern to learn on. Uh, so the hook I'm using is a 18 SE1 uh, Lightning Strike. The thread I'm using is a 14-0 shear in white. Uh, you can use colored thread uh, to get that colored underbody if you want. We're going to use another material. Uh, but um, all we're going to do is we're going to start our thread about a bucking width behind the eye. I'm going to put a couple wraps in. I'm going to make my tag a little longer. I'll show you uh, a couple ways to uh, add a rib to the fly, which is not on the fly that you just saw. So if, if you're following along and you're in the classes, uh, that's not what came in the material kit. But I'll show you something that you can do <clears throat> if you want to. So I'm just going to get that tied in. And I'm going to have a super long thread tag. Uh, when I say super long, it's about four inches. Uh, that's, that's really long for a size 18. So you m make yours according or accordingly. <clears throat> and enough, <clears throat> excuse me, and enough to handle. So I'm just going to tie that in and wrap back. You can also make a wire rib, and I'll show you here in a second where you would tie that in, which is right here. If you want to do a wire rib, I thought I had my wire still sitting here. Yeah, a little bit. All right, you want to use extra small and whatever color uh, you want the rib to be. So that's black. So uh, that's not enough. So what you what you would do is you tie in your uh, I'll tie it in to show you, but you'd want to tie your wire in here just to make it easy on yourself. Uh, make sure you have some dedicated wire scissors, or you could use uh, some. Of these came from like um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, working on computers, one of those computer pack deals. They got little tiny tweezers and all that stuff. It's just a little wire cutter. Uh, but to tie in the rib. If it's wire, you can just start at the back and put one turn in, pinch in both directions, and just pull the wire until it slides and meets up with where your uh, where you originally started your thread. So I'm going to take that out because we don't need both; uh, they'll just get in the way. Uh, so I'm going to clip this to the back to get it out of my way. Next, what I want to do is just wrap forward. Uh, if you don't want to add a rib, don't color it and all that, and just leave white underbody. Uh, the next material that we're going to add is this stretchy stuff. Uh, uh, this micro tubing. It's, it's actually hollow inside. It's stretchy. Uh, Wopsy makes some. They call it stretch tube. Uh, Larva lace makes some. And they call it. Uh, uh, micro tube, I believe. <clears throat> so you can, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can pick it up, slide it under your thread, just put one wrap over, leave it super loose. Everything's going to want to move on you. Oh. And you can pull it through. Uh, the stretchy part makes it a little difficult because all of a sudden it, it'll just kind of fire through. But you can cut it out right there if you need to. That's one way you can tie it in. Uh, I actually find that a little harder uh, to do it than just the normal way, which is just to get your thread up there. Uh, and then just take some and line it up with your thread right up front. And just put a loose wrap over. Choke up on my thread. You may need to have some short thread. You can wax your thread here too if you need to. Um, 
Yeah, come on now. It's not playing nice. I'm trying to keep my fingers back so that you can see it. This actually is easier if you get your fingers super, super close. Uh, but either way, it'll work. There you go. And so when you have that, you can start taking that and just putting loose wraps in. As you draw to the back, pull this material up at roughly a 45 degree angle and you can start tightening. And as you start tightening, it's going to start to change the shape of the body. When you get to about the hook point or so, you can actually start to pull. I don't know if you can kind of see it. You can kind of see the light dancing off of the material. But you can pull to make it even thinner, and that's going to help keep the shape of what you're going for, which is kind of a tapered, overall tapered body shape. So we're going to take that down right to the end. Uh, and you want your thread to line up basically with the back of your, or with the inside part of your, the bend on the hook. Uh, now for the body material, uh, if you're just using thread, which is often used, uh, they don't off, they don't typically put this other material in, but what's the fun of tying flies if you're not making it more challenging? Uh, I'm using this stuff here. I know you can't see that very well. It's, uh, it's called Unique Hair or Supreme Hair. Uh, basically, it's just, uh, you know, if you go to Walmart and find those dolls, that, like the, you know, super cheap dolls, uh, it's just doll hair is what it is. So you can see it's got little crinkles in there and everything. Uh, for tying midges, this stuff is actually really, really good. So I'm just going to slide that under my thread. I'm going to bring it to the top. I'm going to put one wrap over. Now I'm going to pinch the front side of this material. Uh, one thing I should mention, <clears throat> if you're tying on an 18 or smaller, three strands is plenty. Uh, if you start to get into 16s or 14s or wanting to use it uh, for kind of an underbody wrap uh, on something larger, you're going to want more of this stuff. Uh, the more you have, the harder it is to control. But I'm just going to take this, I'm going to keep my finger pinched, as you can see. I'm just going to slide it down. I'm going to get it close to the front. And I'm going to take my scissors. I'm going to line my scissors up directly on top, right with uh, where I started everything, where I started my thread. Oop. Slid off. And I'll trim it out. That one's still a little long. There we go. And next, I'm just going to wrap this thing in going forward. Now, the reason you use white thread here uh, for something like this is it, it helps keep the, the natural tone of the material, right? So if, you, if we were using black thread with this green, it's going to darken this material. And you know what? Go for it. Maybe that's something you want. Maybe, maybe you want that uh, material to be darker. So I'm going to lick my fingers here, and I'm just going to kind of twist. And the reason I'm doing that is just to kind of help get it started. And as I wrap it around, you want to keep the tension as tight as possible. Uh, and to do that, you're going to want your fingers close to the vise. And let the material slide through your fingers. And so you may have to change hand positions frequently to keep that tension tight. If it starts to split apart on you, which happens frequently on something like this, you can take your bobbin or bodkin on either side and rest it against to kind of push and pull in so it stays tight. You want to kind of keep this at a flat angle if possible. And just keep working it around. If it overlaps itself a little bit, that's fine. Uh, if it se separates a little bit and there's a little bit of white thread showing through, that's fine. Uh, that's, it's not a big deal. We're using uh, like a fluorescent green, light olive type color. So I want my thread back to where I, I kind of started. And to tie this off, I'm going to come in, I'm going to put two wraps on the front side of my thread, I'm going to draw to the back. Whoop! Hold on, before I do that, I need to make a turn over the top of it. Make a turn over the top of it, then fold it to the back and draw to the back, and you can tie this in. So you still got all this long stuff hanging out. Now you can come in and. 
trim that out. Now what I like to do here is I like to take a whip finish. This is a mini whip finish. And I'll come in and just put two turns in just to make sure that that material is locked into place. Once I've done that, I'm just going to take a black marker and I'm going to color my thread. And if you're using a different colored thread, like olive or whatever, uh, you can um, you can still color that black. I'm going to move that. Uh, sorry, I'm going to move that thread uh, right behind the eye and work back just a little bit. Kind of start the whole head pro making process. We want the head to be overall about the width of a bodkin. So I'm pretty close there. That's good. Next, it's time to make the actual body, uh, and we're just going to grab it and start wrapping. You can, you want to kind of keep it tight towards the back, and if you if you're having trouble and it, it keeps slipping off to the rear, you can take your fingernail and put it into place to try to help keep it in place. Uh, you may have to angle this pretty pretty far forward, uh, to just get it started. Uh, you could also, again, you could take your bodkin and put it to the back just to hold it in place for a turn or, turn or two. Once it starts going, it, it typically grabs pretty well. Now, I know it's a little difficult to see this, but we want to leave a little gap. Let's see if I can put my hand or something behind there. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little gap or a little spacing between each wrap. We want those in there. Um, it adds a natural rib to the fly. But it also allows us to bring in a material like this or the wire to rib the fly if we want. As I'm coming forward, I'm going to start to slowly loosen up my tension on this material to help make the front part of this fly a little bit bigger. Now when I get to the front, I'm going to pull it to the front side of my thread, sneak over, and make one wrap over uh, on, the, on the back side. I'll grab my thread, make a wrap over on the front side. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna start tying this in as I angle the stretchy tube back at about a 45 degree angle. I'm just gonna work right up into there. Now I'm going to put another whip finish in just to make sure that I don't lose this. There's nothing more frustrating than losing it at the last second. Whoop. Moved my fly. And so that way I've actually got it. If, if it slips out on you, say you've got this far and it slipped out on you a couple times, uh, just use a dab of super glue, let it dry. Uh, and then what I like to do is I like to pull this tight or stretch it out and come in with my fingernails and just trim. Fingernail clippers, I should say, and just trim. And I'll put in a few more wraps. Just like so. Now, so the original fly that I showed you, that's, that's the end of this fly. Uh, if you want to rib this, now you bring in your rib and you just follow along the in between the creases and it'll rib the fly. And being thread, uh, you know, you can kind of get that look if that's what's, if that's something you're wanting to do or uh, want to challenge yourself. Um, I'm not sure that it's much of a challenge. It's actually pretty easy to do, but I guess if you've, if you've never tied a midge, it, it could be a, a little intimidating or a little challenging. I'm going to cut this out. It's going to leave a little tag there, but Eh, not too bad. Uh, other than that, all I'm going to do is make sure I have enough of my thread colored. Uh, two or three inches is plenty. I'm going to grab my super glue here, and I'm going to just lightly brush it against my thread. You can see those little tiny beads forming up. We only need to have about an inch uh, covered in super glue. And uh, this is called a wet whip, or a wet whip finish, if you you don't know and I'm going to put in four to five turns 
maybe six, to the back. And I'm going to take my thread, I'm going to pull to the back <clears throat> to try to keep that eye clear. Having a little piece of uh, wire or stripped peacock or something like that is uh, pretty handy here. Uh, before you do anything, you can come in and just clean out the eye like so. Make sure there's no glue involved or getting stuck in there, Invol involved in you not being able to tie this on. Now, you can come in and you can trim this out. One of the better ways I've found to trim uh, the, the uh, thread off of midges is just open up your scissors, place the, thre uh, place the thread in there, and literally just, you know, cut it off. Uh, a lot of times if you trim it off, it'll leave this little tiny tag. It left a little tag anyway. If it does, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Uh, and now to make the two-tone, I'm just going to turn this to the side. I'll take the uh, broad side of my Sharpie and start at the head and just run down the back and run back up a few times. And that's it. I have my two-tone midge. <clears throat> if that's that little hair is really bugging you, I guess you can come in and trim it out, although it's really not that big of a deal. These little bugs have little legs and little hairs too, so it's not a big deal. Uh, and that's it. That's not really all there is to tying this guy. Um, you could uh, you could come back in and coat this with uh, some UV resin if you wanted to. You know, some people call it bomb proof or whatever. I don't know if it's actually bomb proof if you do that, but uh, it'd probably get it to hold up a little longer. Um, and that's really all there is to it. A really simple, uh, easy, easy, easy midge pattern to tie. Uh, and the colors that I have here, this is going to imitate a uh, uh, kind of a high country caddis and that kind of a green. Um, but uh, that's it. Um, it's a great way to kind of cut your teeth on uh, tying midges. So anyway, uh, if you liked the video, always appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up uh, and subscribe to my channel. Um, if you found this video and you're not over on Fly Tying for Beginners, and Facebook, uh, we'd be happy to have you. We'd love to have you. Just answer the questions and uh, that gets you into the group. We do all kinds of fun stuff over there like giveaways and contests and uh, it's a great group over there. We have a lot of fun. Uh, this video is a part of the classes that we do over there. Uh, and so uh, you, can, you, you know, you'll find more of those. Uh, and other than that, uh, you know, have fun kind of playing around with this one. Uh, real easy pattern to tie. Uh, and it's uh, uh, actually it came out of a guidebook, believe it or not, a Colorado guidebook. So uh, it's a it's a really cool pattern. So anyway, give it a try, and uh, we'll see you later. Happy tying, everybody. Take care.